A very warm welcome to a freezing Autogefühl episode here with the all new Mercedes G Class. We'll tell you all about you need to know in exterior, interior, and the driving experience. Today, also with a new engine and special snow driving experience. So join us in full HD, full screen, and full X. Let's go. So in the front you can see you have still this upright front grille. They saved about 170 kilograms of weight. For example, make the front hood, the side mud guards, and also the doors from aluminum to bring the weight down. Still 2.4 tons, so it's still a very heavy vehicle. The front headlamps, they have a round shape and they are also coming now with LED optional. Other than that, sensors are also hidden behind the Mercedes Star here, still in a 3D shape, that's nice. Then there's the front camera. In the lower part, we have those comp style and the color here. My favorite one is brilliant blue. That's what we call Thomas Blue here on Autogefühl. Characteristically, you still have those, well, those eyes, which are the front turning indicators. I, I would just love this detail. But there's one thing different. So that's side mirrors. We'll soon take a look at that. And have you noticed? A G-Class always appeared quite massive, but now it's even 12 centimeters wider. So this is a massive gain in width right there. Not quite often that we see such a change from generation to generation, but still it's not as wide as some of the big full-size SUVs. 4 meters 82 or 15 foot 8 is the length of the new G-Class. It's about 5 centimeters longer than before, so a slight change there. And design-wise, the main change is really the side mirror. You have a round side mirror now, which was the number one criticism point, especially for G-Class fans. And the reason they've done that, it's by the way not the copied one from a GLE or something, it's an own development for the G-Class. The reason is it reduces the wind noise at higher speeds, especially when you sit on the inside from this area, and it's also better for overall aerodynamics. It's also supposed to bring down consumption and so on. Yeah, that's the modern approach. The other one is the classic design approach. You can surely argue for both stuff. Also some off-road figures, approaching angle in the front is 30 degrees, approach or like leaving <laughs> angle in the rear is 31 degrees and the ground clearance is 27 centimeters. So still very off-road capable in our other summertime off-road episode. We also have shown you a lot about that. 22 inch rims is the maximum. This one here is a winter tire together with 19 inch rims. Really anxious to see how that one plays out for the riding comfort later in the driving part. Both winter tires and smaller rims. But I still think visually it's still totally fine to go with 19 inch. It's an off-road car so this rather bigger tire off-road look is totally fine with me. What do you think? Side steps here. Also gathered some dirt already. And of course you have those classic door handles still with this typical G-Class closing sound. You really can slam the doors and it does not sound like a modern car. It sounds like a traditional car and I think that's what the car is also about. It looks traditional, somehow has those traditional features, 
but is meanwhile really a modern car underneath. So this is one of the rare cars where I can stand next to it and it's actually the same height. <laughs> really interesting. So uh, typical design here also with the separate rear tire. That's also the reason why the door will open sideways. We'll show that on the interior part very soon. It's always a nice thing to look at. They haven't changed too much in design in the rear. Those tail lamps, of course, have been updated just a little bit. Interesting to know, by the way, that in the front there's an independent suspension, whereas the rear suspension is still rigid. That's for the tough off-road use. However, this also reduces comfort if you compare it, for example, to some of the modern SUVs. What do you think about the design here of the new G-Class? So let's open the hood. So far for the new generation there was the G500, a 4 liter V8 petrol engine with 422 horsepower and the G63, the same engine basically but then tuned to 585 horsepower. This one now is the G350D, the first new diesel, 3 liter diesel, 6 cylinder. It's a completely new engine, also has a special dampening so for less vibrations and stuff this one here was 286 horsepower approximately the same would also be used in the GLE but then with a little bit less horsepower spec here the acceleration figure is 7.4 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour that's only one and a half seconds slower than the G500 in acceleration. Pretty interesting. The all-wheel drive setup will remain the same for all engines. 40% base in the front, 60% in the rear. Permanent all-wheel drive, so the torque distribution right there. In the previous generation it was 50-50, so a little bit more rear wheel bias here now for this generation. So let's see how that one turns out. Consumption-wise, in our test so far, the petrol engines were at about, well, 12 liters on one kilometers minimum and up to 14 and if you push it even more than 14 liters so we hope diesel will score a better consumption here today we'll go up the hill a little bit make some agile driving we cannot measure that but at the end or towards the end of our review we also take a motorway ride to really test the minimum consumption of this diesel and then we can tell you if that makes sense to go for that one comparison to the petrol if you want to save fuel This is the car here. I really like the slim design. It's also a light but elegant, also with a touchable 3D Mercedes logo. Then again, for you, exclusively the traditional door handles with a closing sound. Satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> Inside of the door, it's really well processed, soft touch. Then Here's a matte wood inlet. You can get different styles, but I really like this one. You also hear it. It's a matte surface. It feels very natural. You can also fit some bigger bolts at the inside of the doors. That does work. And at the inside of the other side here, you see um, there's a special badge. This is just a small gimmick. Really funny. I love those details. And if you take a first look at the interior, it has been totally redesigned with the modern steering wheel, the Distronic. ACC is at the steering wheel now, not a separate column. There's a digital cockpit setup we'll soon take a detailed look at. First of all at the seats, you can see they are quite voluminous. Unfortunately there's no alternative to animal skin yet, not from the stock price list. You have to specially ask for it at the dealers then. And let's see how the seat form plays out.
So now let's get inside and today the shoe tap is really important because of the snow. Here we go. It's really funny the seating position here always in the G-Class. You sit so upright and so high, even higher than in the normal uh, street SUVs. And also the look around because everything else, the front hood is also quite low. You just have a fantastic view and this is also what is crucial. Even though the front screen is not as upright than before, it is still very upright, so this is also a very unique feeling when sitting here. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, and that still leaves plenty of headroom, even though we have the panoramic roof here, which can be manually opened and closed. And then you can also, um, of course, really open it, like this one, and leave some light in here. And this is a pretty nice feature for sure. Although it's not too big, for, of course. Well, in this new generation, there's more legroom in the front, 3.8 centimeters, so a little bit more legroom in the front. Of course, it depends a little bit on the seat, but the maximum uh, legroom you basically have. And about six centimeters more room also sideways. So shoulder and elbows have also a lot more room than in the previous generation, because I told you initially, the car has become wider. The steering wheel, you adjust it electrically here, like this in reach and height. And the seat control is at the inside of the doors, so um, showing it in review is always a little bit <laughs> not that easy because I have to reach over there. So you can also lengthen the lower seating area, the lower area front and back, back part and even the head restraint with the electric function. It's also pretty funny. Heated seats and cool seats are also available and also a seat massage. We'll take you on tour of the infotainment system uh, pretty soon. And was also interesting, I mean it's not a new feature but still one nice to have, that those side bolsters always pump up in the corner at the opposite side that you're getting you know some more feedback right there when you go in the right corner. This would be here pumping up a little bit, going stiffer, then you're getting health side Interior overview, you can still get analog gauges on the left. This one is the top setup with 2 times 12.3 inch screens. They are not touch, but they are dissolved into one big area, also with some ambient light and the nice matte wood inlet right there. Also at the top here of the panning handle or the O sh beep handle. Round turbine vents, also in, very interesting from design. It's of course more modern, less buttons than before, but you still have a separate climate unit. And those are the three buttons here for the differential locks. We also tested that one in our uh, soft off-road and even a little bit harder <laughs> off-road driving episode in the summer. The steering wheel again from this perspective is the standard one we know from Mercedes basically, volume on the right and with the right thumb, you can also control the right screen, so uh, that is possible then when you don't want you, you know, uh, just want to keep your hand on a steering wheel. And on the left side, you control with your left thumb the digital instruments. So we may go into details of those screens. Digital instruments, they are quite helpful because you are flexible then. I would still like analog instruments because they're fitting for this car somehow. But the digital instruments, for example, can, can display some GPS information. That is for sure helpful. Or you can also change the design if you want, for example, to a different style. So you are definitely more flexible with it and it's also good to see. But again, for this car, I think analog instruments still somehow fit. So this infotainment screen is not touched yet. It's not the new MBUX generation. So. Um, it's a little bit older generation, but still it has a great visualization, that's for sure. And as I said, you control it either with the right thumb at the steering wheel or with the central control, um, control jog in the middle console. And voice command is also possible, but not with Hey Mercedes. Um, you press a button, then you need to follow a certain scheme. So it's not like this free um, voice command yet. Pretty cool for sure that we um, can not only con connect the phone via Bluetooth but also with the cable then with the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And if you hear your music, you can still use the car navigation. That's pretty in uh, interesting and important. 
Here my favorite feature definitely um, the massage function option of course you can go for a separate one then you really get all the way up to the shoulders that's pretty nice. And the camera system if I put in the reverse gear I have the reverse camera plus the drone view from above. Also nice that the car is colored in blue of course you have to pay this extra if you want the most sophisticated system. Then you can also switch around for example on this side view that you see some of the rims right and left tire next to each other to protect them or the view to the front also in different angles and this is also the self parking system we've tested that recently with the Mercedes B-Class. So again the three differential locks close again for you then this is the climate unit here hotter hotter and colder still the analog clock we have here or some hotkeys for the infotainment system too. Then again, the matte wood, really nice. You can slide open for a bit of cup holders. This here in the front is also a spot to put your key. And there's another 12 volt power supply in the very front. Then this is the classic control unit for the infotainment system. You can also um, deactivate the ESP. The driving modes are selected here. Oh, then there's a camera system button. There's a separate button for that. Always good to have that. And the low range mode for the real off-road use. And finally, the split armrests. Open like this. And then you have, first of all, an inductive charging platform here and two USB supplies. One for connecting the smartphone and one just for recharging. As for the rear department, well, this has massively changed 15 centimeters gain in length for the leg room. So far you could not really sit with tall adults in the G-Class in the rear. Now you can, especially with those gaps here for the knees, even though the overall package is still bad. So there's not a lot of room in the G-Class in the rear, although it has already some substantial length. Headroom however has no problem for tall adults. That's totally fine. And you sit pretty much upright again here also in the rear. That's a comfortable position. And the rear part, you can also make it a little bit steeper if you want to sit more upright or then, of course, all the way back if you relax a little bit more. Middle part here with the armrest, adaptive cup holders. And there's also a ski hatch available. You open it then from both sides. Since we're also in the ski region here today at the Timmelsjoch, it might also be a fitting venue. And the very lower part, you can fold this open and have the USB supply next to a 12 volt power supply. And to already prepare our look at the trunk, you can fold up the seating area like this. And then it's possible to flip the rear bench even full flat. Of course, the front seats has to have to be in the front at some point. So this is exactly set up where it would be working and do the same at your side. Let's now go for the rear hatch. Let's also take this closing sound. It's the same then with the doors and again, Due to the heavy rear replacement tires, those doors open sideways at off-road vehicles. Of course, you couldn't flip them up. So, and that's it. Actually, square dimensions, you can see, I soon take the measurements. This rubber floor mat, which is additionally available with a G stamp here as well. And this one here is an um, additional net you can put out. There's a cover available, which has rails at the sides. 12 volt power supply. You can see some space is of course lost here due to this traditional building style otherwise it would be even wider. But how wide is it actually? So in the length we got approximately just you know, 80 centimeters so it's not too long. However in the width although we are limited here due to those um, wheel arches there's still just a just above a meter in width here so that's actually quite good still and if I put a cabin trolley here inside you can see you can fit it upright in here already like this and a couple of those or like this even so you'll just get along with this trunk for sure but now when I flip the seats so I've already flipped the base of the seats from rear that we're a little bit faster here now and then I can also fold the rear bench completely it's of course limited up to here then 
Same I'll do at the other side. Yes, Thomas work out here just for you again. So here we go. Now the question is again, what's with the length there? If I go to this rear seat, so from there up to the end, is just over one meters 50 for loading longer things through. Or you could just put those two up again and then use the ski hatch to load through even longer things. And of course you can easily deinstall this top cover here with pushing it inside. That's also possible. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the new Mercedes G-Class today with the 350 diesel. So it's really interesting because acceleration wise it's just one and a half seconds slower than the G500 and sound wise well it's a pretty new diesel you hear it somehow it is a diesel but it does not have the very typical diesel nailing so it also shows it's a very new and evolved diesel engine and again you have abundance of power and we're going up the hill now of course this is not really a good consumption test but it's a good test for the handling and also for the performance of this engine. We have different driving modes. For example, the Eco mode that reduces the throttle input, so for better consumption. Then we have the Comfort mode, which I'm in so far, and the Sport mode would boost the engine setup a little bit. More throttle input, easier now to apply it. That is, of course, helping me uphill and you already hear that the gears are turned up higher car is shifting up later. Overall this new generation has been improved in the handling and in the suspension comfort. However if you're going over some transverse bumps then you can expect a comfort for example with an air suspension of a Mercedes GLE or like an other modern SUV. So as long as the roads are quite even it's really cool. You can enjoy this upright seating position. You have the best overview from all Mercedes SUVs. Because the hood is relatively low to the you know, relation to where you're sitting. So this is really cool. But then again, if you face some transverse bumps, you still feel that you have a rigid suspension or rigid axle in the rear. So there is definitely a difference. As long as we're driving slowly as for the total speed, it's also okay for the noise insulation, it's quite silent in here. Just when you're going over 100 kilometers or over 62 miles an hour, then you feel that you're basically facing the wind with this very upright windscreen, so you have to be aware of that. It's not the best and most comfortable high-speed autobahn cruiser, but it's a good cruiser when you're at low and middle speeds. And it's just so much fun because this car also transports this character while driving it. This pure off-road character with the edges, you can see it in the front hood, at the sides, upright at the wi windows, and again, the great overview you have. So the handling so far, here up the hill, is pretty nice. It's not super sporty, that's not how it's supposed to be, so the suspension is always, you see it here, quite soft. You can shake the car as it still has this off-road focus. That's how it's supposed to be. But considering the weight of the car and the off-road focus of the car, it's still somewhat fun to drive it also here up the hill. And again, not missing any performance of a G500. This diesel here does very well. Um, of course, at a later stage, I would be interested for a long-term consumption test, but we can surely say that you will at least save about two liters on modern kilometers with the diesel if you compare it to the petrol engine. And of course, there's also a lower entry price, so that might be another argument for the diesel. So that's it here in the road driving already. Also good that the car is not too wide. It has become wider than before, massively. But again, if you compare it to other full-size SUVs, it's still smaller. And that's also good for the handling and also for the feel that you don't feel too big even on some narrower roads. A 
and now we'll have a special winter driving party on snow and ice. There's a little ice layer just under the snow, so we have to be careful, especially when we're going down. Not such a problem when we're going uphill. Let me tell you something about the tires, because already on the road I felt that this car here now is more comfortable than we were driving it in summertime. And the reason is, in the summertime, right, we had bigger alloys and also summer tires, so there was less tire left. And now we are on winter tires and it's 19 inch rims, so the ride is more comfortable because there's just more tire left to even stuff out. So if you seek more comfort, stay with smaller rims. If you want a rather stiff and more pumpy experience, then go for the bigger rims. Of course, it's always a visual theme, but I think this off-road car look here is totally fine also when you are with smaller rims. The all-wheel drive distribution, it's a permanent all-wheel drive here, the old school stuff, nine-speed automatic converter gearbox. So the all-wheel drive distribution has been 50-50 front rear in the predecessor. And now in the new generation, they've switched it to 40-60. So 40% in the front, 60% at the rear. This makes the car a little bit sportier. So uh, more a little bit of a rear wheel bias that helped us, especially when road driving. Still, as we've seen also in our initial episode with the G-Class, you should check that out later. It is massively off-road capable still. So. Uh, it's really astonishing what obstacles it can face. That was really, really cool. So this is here the Timmelsjoch, over 2,000 meters. And it's basically closed um, at that time. So they opened it for us exclusively to have some snow riding experience. And so far, I mean, if you have good new winter tires, those are normal winter tires, not special snow something you don't feel so much of a difference. Of course, it will get a little bit snowier now, but the car gives me a good and safe feeling. It's also accounting for this good overview and the upright seating position I have. This is also something which really helps you also in adverse conditions. So um, like this, you know, the visibility is not that good. Also when the car is driving in, in front of you, this is our instructor car because you're not allowed to drive alone up here. It's a GLC Coupe, by the way, if you have wondered. It's hard to um, recognize it in this snowy surrounding, definitely, and also to differentiate between GLC and GLE Coupe, for example. So now you see it's getting snowier and snowier, and the all-wheel drive is giving me a harmonious feeling, so getting pulled from the front, getting pushed from the back at the same time, so that gives me also good grip when accelerating. So um, even if I you know, step on the throttle a little bit harder at some point. What did he say? I have no idea. Sometimes, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> so we have some... I get some... Uh, or we turn it off rather, that you're not annoyed by that. <laughs> So now it's getting really interesting because left and right are some snow barriers and well I should not do any mistakes now because this is hard packed snow, it's like concrete. We shouldn't hit that. Also the ground, you maybe also hear that on camera now, the ground gets a little bit rougher. So there's um, this snow ice mix also from uh, cars that have been running there initially. And that gets also a little bit rougher from suspension. But again, just proof my key finding for today is also that you should really go with some smaller rims. I know a lot of guys want to put huge rims on their G-Class. But again, you do lose a lot of comfort by that for sure. But here, again, very safe feeling. So also in this little bit faster off-road driving, G-Class performs very well. And here's again another situation where <laughs> nice red color as well, right? But I prefer the brilliant blue here still. Um, so when it's getting a little bit narrow, it's again good proof that the G-Class um, is really suitable. It's not that wide, still in this new generation, it's a little bit 
narrower than some of the other big four-set SUVs. Again, I can just stress that this feeling is really good because a lot of those four-set SUVs, especially when you drive them in Europe, not such a problem in, in the US, um, they're getting too big for, for some roads or parking lots and stuff. And even though this car appears so huge, it's not as big as the other um, travel full-size SUVs. Now it's also getting a little bit more loose, but the traction control is very well applied that we don't have too much wheel spin. Of course, for off-road use or in the off-road modes, you would turn that traction control off or have it in the off-road mode where it's drawn back, that you get a little bit more wheel spin for off-road situations. Also, three differential locks, as I've shown you earlier. We used that one also in our harder off-road driving test. Now let's see the brakes. The ABS is working, but we still got some grip on that um, snow that came overnight. You always see that the steering has an off-road focus. It is very easy to control and you don't have, have to have much power. Um, by the way, if you hear the, the, some um, uh, like bell ringing sound, that's more from one of the suitcases in the back. It's not from the, from the vehicle. The vehicle itself, there's no rattling or, or something whatsoever. It's just because those um, little small bumps make the, make the car shake just a little bit. So, but you see, when I turn the steering wheel, there's no dead zone, so something is happening at any time, but it is definitely set rather on an off-road character, so you have to steer more. So when those off-road cars are really controlled in a rough way, you need to have some more steering feel that you can have some precise maneuvers and also that when something is changing the tires on the ground that the steering wheel is not shaken all over the place from the feedback and maybe dislocates the thumb that's why you also should keep your thumb on the steering wheel when driving off-road um, you know for normal road driving this can be a little bit distracting because you have to steer quite a lot you know so for normal road use, it would be a little bit cooler if you would need to steer less. It would be more dynamic, more direct. However, still, it gives you a very natural steering feel. So it is still fun to do that. And you get a good feeling for the car overall. Well, now the visibility is going down massively. But the thing I really enjoy is getting in those corners and then accelerating out of it. You know, then, then you also feel something of the rear wheel bias that the rear comes around just a little bit that's the fun part of it and also one of the changes here in the new generation so this additional 10 percent they put on the on the um, rear axle is actually helping and i have the feeling we're a little bit better on the way than the glc in front of us <laughs> but it's just maybe just my feeling or assumption Wow, it's really cool going up that here. Uh, we've been before here, by the way, on an uh, Audi special episode in the summer. That was, I think, wow, was it 2013 or something? So a couple of years ago, but was also getting some amazing footage. Now we're at 2,500 meters, so pretty high. Air is getting thin. And here we are. And hey, we have just another terrain for you. This is an off-road terrain, so it's basically like a forest way. Um, so, you know, some loose ground, a little bit uphill and stuff, you can see here. Um, it's nothing yet where we would need um, special off-road modes or something. This is easy work for the G-Class. But interesting is that although there's no air suspension, it's surprisingly comfortable in off-road situations, even if it gets um, really shaky like this here, you know? And you can see also I can play with the steering wheel then, so um, it doesn't deceive me when the ground underneath is changing. We're also going in a rather quick way here. 
because it's not so much shape. But you can see <laughs> our luggage in the rear is already going all over the place. That's how you then see or feel and hear how the G-forces are applied. Bam! <laughs> so really rough rock terrain now then here. But the G-class is very well going up. Overdrive distribution also quite even you feel that. Now we have to go a little bit slower. And just to test it, if we just stop in the middle of nowhere, haven't done anything with the driving modes, no differential lock whatsoever, and then we just continue. See, easy. No wheel slip, spin or whatsoever. So, I think I could deliver you another terrain right here. Always fun to have these off-road driving situations. Not just fun for the luggage in the rear. I hope it's still all complete. And I promised you some motorway and consumption figures. And so when I put the consumption meter on reset and set the cruise control to 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour, with the diesel, we at 12 liters on one kilometers. That's like towards a 20 mpg region. Like that's really bad. That's really, really bad. I would ex would have expected that the diesel here scores way better than the petrol engines. Um, I mean, maybe a little, but hmm, that's really strange. So, um, hmm, a little bit unexpected indeed. So, obviously, this car from the building form itself is so anti-consumption friendly that the diesel does not make the biggest difference. By the way, at about 100 kilometers or 60, 62 miles an hour, it's still okay noise insulation wise. It's still comfortable to cruise and drive. And in most countries for the highway, this will be okay then. However, here at the moment, it's 130, which is allowed, where we can also show you the acceleration from 100 to 130, let's do that. Was it? So you see, yes, the petrol engines do, of course, have more power, but still, considering the weight of the vehicle, you have sufficient power with the diesel. And now, at 130, you hear and feel that this is all already pretty, you know, pretty much for the car. Suspension-wise, no problem. It's still very stable, and also when you do a lane change, also. Um, doesn't shake too much or something. It's really okay. But the noise insulation is not proper then. Or, I mean, the question is, can you insulate something like that? Um, because the windshield is just so upright, it gets really noisy in here. So now we have at 15 liters. Um, let me just quickly reset that as well, because um, then we see if there's a big difference then between 100 or 130 kilometers. Mm. And directly jumps to, to 16 or something. Wow. That's really interesting. Anyway, we are even going slightly downhill. Hmm. I mean, yes, it's a little bit colder. And with winter tires, I'm not sure if that, that has any effect, but Hmm. This diesel should really score a better consumption figure. Really negatively surprised in this respect, I have to say. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Mercedes G-Class here in this brilliant blue. 
my favorite Thomas Blue. Well, in exterior, it is a little bit rounder in the new generation, but it still remains the basic angular shape. It's bigger than before. Some say they prefer the smaller version of the predecessor, but then again, you also have more room on the interior. Well, those side mirrors here are, you know, probably the biggest criticism point for the fans. However, they reduce the wind noise and also are better for overall aerodynamics. On the interior again, it's more modernized, more digitalized, a higher build quality. So overall, again, this cool upright seating position, you have this command view. This is so unique. So overall, this vehicle remains very unique. Well, with the diesel, it is quite refined, has also little vibrations and stuff. So we can recommend them also over the petrol engines because you then score a little less in consumption because the petrol engines are really high in consumption and even if we would say oh you know whatever if enough money whatever uh, it can be quite annoying if you go to the petrol station all the time so there the diesel can also help and also bring down the entry price a little bit because still the car is super super expensive and so there's one chance to keep the price a little bit down with this new diesel too. What do you think? And also, please join our other G-Class episode where we compared the G500 to the G63 and had more this summer surrounding. And also one key finding in the winter surrounding with the winter tires and the 19-inch rims is a way better ride than with the bigger stiff rims and the summer tires. You should maybe also take that in mind when ordering the rim size of your vehicle. Well, what will win? Visual versus comfort. You have to decide that on your own. So leave me your comments, tune into the next G-Class episode and also to our other SUV episodes by Mercedes and also of the competitors. Stick to Autogefühl. Thank you so much for tuning in.